What's good? It's your boy, the urban legend, K to the bird, K to USA representative all day in the building. And today, man, we're going to be talking about some more facts, not fiction. And the artist we're going to be focusing on today is the big homie, Fraser Boy, aka Fraser Bizzle. I'm about to get into a little bit about his history, his past. And I'm going to get into how I linked with him and dropped the banger, a classic strip club record that we got out on all platforms. Let's get into it. All right, Fraser Boy, a.k.a. Cedric Coleman, a.k.a. Fraser Bizzle. Grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, you know what I mean? North Memphis to be exact. But he also grew up and lived by the Bay in Tennessee. For a lot of you that don't know, most people think that the Bay is just in California. But they do have a Bay on the side of Tennessee. So anyway, man, Fraser Boy came up just like any other person that grew up in Tennessee, man. You know what I mean? Came up doing this thing in the music. You know what I mean? Tennessee is very big on the music culture. It's like, if you grow up down there, you frequent down there, you're going to be involved with music in some kind of form. So, Fraser been doing this thing in high school, you know what I mean? Rapping, doing a little bit of music, but not taking it seriously until he got discovered by DJ Paul. DJ Paul was the first one that found Fraser Boy. Then Juicy J also came and said, yo, this dude Fraser Boy can really spit. He got good lyrics. Eventually, they signed Fraser Boy to a deal to hypnotize minds. I believe it happened in 2001, to be exact. And that's when 3-6 Mafia was first coming up, you know, building a brand, building a name, getting a reputation in the industry. You know, this is one of the artists, one of the first artists that they invested in. So Fraser Boy did his thing with them, you know what I mean, being featured on certain albums, you know, contributing to certain songs, certain verses, giving niggas ideas, certain formulas for tracks, and then he just kept on pushing with the label, and then in 2003, he dropped his first solo album, which was called Gone On That Bay, Gone On That Bay, man, and if you know about Gone On That Bay, that's, that's a classic in the South, you know, certified classic in the South, I think it went gold, but as far as like the people, the way people received that album, the album was a classic. Everybody in the South was very familiar with this album. It had crazy production. It had a lot of good features on it. I think everybody from the Quick was on it. Gangsta Boo was on it. Rest in Peace. Project Pat was on it. Crunchy Black was on it. DJ Paul was on it. And DJ Paul produced every track on it. So it was pretty hard, man. It's a very good album. If you haven't heard Going on That Bay, you need to go check that out ASAP. After the Going on That Bay, he was getting some success as a solo artist, so he started focusing on doing shows, doing more features, getting himself out there more, you know what I mean, trying to build his brand. So like in uh, 2004 or five, when DJ K Slay was buzzing and first came out, and had the streets on fire with the Street Sweeper series, you know, he was featured on that album multiple times. And it was a real album, you know, DJ K Slay was known for doing mixtapes. Rest in peace, DJ K Slay, cause he a legend too. At this particular time, he was focusing on doing the album, and that album was called The Street Sweeper. And on that album, Fraser Boy appeared on like three or four tracks, but the most track that everybody know, yeah, he was on three or four tracks, but the most notable track was We Don't Give a Fuck Where You From. And that song had 3-6 Mafia on it, it had Little White on it, and it had Fraser Boy on it, you know what I mean? And that shit, if you haven't heard that, that song was crazy, man. DJ K Slay was in the video, screaming shit was filmed in new york tennessee and i think it was filmed out west too that was a real tough video man a real good look for each one of them as an individual artist and a real good look for fraser boy as a new upcoming artist so after that in 2005 he dropped his second album called me being me on the second album man it had good production it had solid beats and it had good you know subject matters but the second album didn't get good promotion, man. They didn't give it good promotion. A lot of people didn't even know when it dropped. A lot of people didn't know when it was out. 
You know what I mean? He didn't, his face didn't appear enough on TV. He wasn't on the 106 and Park Countdown and, you know, BET, Rap City and all that shit. So the album was kind of like a dud, you know what I mean? And I don't know who's to, who's to take the blame, you know what I mean? I heard that it was because of the label they was going in different directions with the artists they had. You know, like Pat was coming back out of the streets. He just got released, you know, from doing his time at that time. I don't know if they dropped the ball on him, man. You know what I mean? I don't think he got the right promotion. And I recently saw an interview with him talking about it with Jump Off the Porch in Atlanta. And it sounded like, you know what I mean, he was kind of salty with them boys for doing the business the wrong way. They kind of damn, you know, smudged him out. When he had a when he had a buzz and he had his momentum going, they kind of didn't give him that push. So anyway, his second album was a dud, man. So after the second album, you know, 3-6 Mafia started getting more bigger as a group, you know, they were starting to become as the most known unknowns, and that's when they did that song that was on that legendary movie, Hustle and Flow, you know what I mean, Hustle and Flow, starring Terrence Howard, that legendary movie, man, and it's a song on that movie called It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp, and that song, Hard Out There for a Pimp, a lot of people think that it was just made for the movie, and Terrence Howard came up with it, or 3-6 Mafia or Juicy J or DJ Paul came up with it, but the person that really wrote that song, came up with the idea, was Fraser Boy, and the other person that contributed to that song lyrically on the lyrics was Capone, Al Capone, you know what I mean, another Memphis legend, straight up and down, they the ones that penned that whole track, you know what I mean, they came up with the idea, and DJ Paul and Juicy made the beat, and when they let John Singleton hear it, you know what I mean? He wanted that track out of all the tracks that they already did for the movie. He specifically wanted that track. He said this track has to be a part of the movie and it has to be, you know, put on a major platform and promoted the right way. So that's why that song, All I Hate For A Pimp, is known. Like everybody remembers that from the movie. It was captivating, you know what I mean? It was a good record. And that record was so successful that, that that record won an Oscar, man. So Fraser Boy got an Oscar under his belt. An independent artist that came up on the grind got an official Oscar. You know what I mean? If you go check out his Instagram, check out his page, you can see he always pulling up with the Oscar, you know what I mean? And they got it in the Memphis, uh, I can't remember exactly where, if it's in the library. It's one of them buildings downtown Memphis where they got it in there, you know what I mean? So... That's major, man. That's a major look for Fraser Boy. He did his damn thing. To come up with that song, to create that song, that flow, that pattern, you know, that's amazing, man. That song was special, you know. It did what it's supposed to do. After the success of that song, man, it seemed like the relationship between DJ Paul, Juicy J, and Fraser Boy didn't work out, you know what I mean? It didn't go right, you know, because me personally, I think at that time, when they had the success of that record and everybody knew about Fraser Boy contributing to it, I think it would have been a good time to drop an album from him real quick at that time. But, you know, 3-6 Mafia was still riding away from, like, them songs like Pop My Cargo or Stay Fly, you know what I mean? All them songs that they had just dropped, like, a year before that movie dropped. So they were still riding high off their buzz, so they probably was focused on what they needed to do. So I ain't trying to say that they was right or wrong, but... I can understand why Fraser Boy would feel a little salty about the way things turned out. So anyway, after that, Fraser Boy came back with one of his best albums, in my personal opinion. This album was a banger, yo. This is like my favorite album from him. It's called The Key. You know what I mean? The Key. That was his third album. The Key, man. The Key was a classic. That album is so fucking hard. It's so ridiculous, you know, with the way you come in with the styles, with the flows, the beats. You know what I mean? For everybody out there that want to get an idea of how dope this album is, it's got that vibe of, like, Young Dolph shit, and it's got the vibe of, like, some Project Pat shit. So put them two together, and you got some good Fraser Boy sauce, you know what I mean? And I'm telling you, you should go check that album out. So anyway, after that, man, you know, my boy Fraser Bizzle been on his grind, you know, doing his thing solo. You know, making his business on his own, being an independent artist since that time from 2008 on up to now. You know what I mean? He did other things besides music. You know, he did documentaries with Snoop Dogg, Terrence Howard. They did a documentary together 
called Take Me to the River, you know what I mean? Take Me to the River, it's a documentary. If you haven't seen that, you should probably go check that out too. And he was involved in a couple of more independent films, not documentaries, but real movies. So, French Boy been doing his independent thing, you know what I mean, networking. So, in all that time when he was doing all his networking and movies and everything like that, and the music independently, he moved to Georgia. And when he moved to Georgia, he linked up with somebody I knew, a good close friend of mine, man, and goes by the name of Jimmy Cole. Yeah, my boy Jimmy Cole out there in Decatur, you know what I mean, out there in Georgia, keeping a G. He ran into Fraser Boy back on some street shit, not even on some music shit, on some, you know what I mean, on some, you know what I mean, I ain't gonna get into it on here, but they met on some non-music non shit, on some non-business shit, on some other type of business shit, but anyway, they, they built a relationship and they became friends. And me and Jimmy Cole was already tight. So, you know, when I was working on an album, I was working on that volume two, LL Cool Bird. I reached out to my, my boy Jimmy Cole and said, yo, you didn't get that song with Fraser Boy. And he was like, all right, I'm gonna get with him and see what's going on, see how his schedule looking, see what he can do. And, the, and see if he can knock it off for us. See if he can knock it off for us for the love, you know what I mean? Not really trying to tax us and just, you know, giving us what we need. And Fraser Boy, you know, he was a good dude, you know what I mean? He ain't really try to tax nobody, you know what I mean, for the feature, nothing like that. He was seeing that, you know, him and Jimmy Cole was cool, and then he was like, yo, that boy K. Burr, he do a lot of music with a lot of people I work with, like Project Pat, you know what I mean, Flip. So I see he out there grinding, so it might be a good for us to do this record together. So we got into the studio, man, and put that shit down. And the beat for that track, man, I got that track from another person that stays in Atlanta, but he's from South Carolina, but his name is King Kevin. He a good producer, you know what I mean? And he came together and put the, the track, you know, together, gave it that nice little bounce with that bass and those cowbells and shit like that, some real strip club anthem type shit. And you know what I mean? That shit came out right. And we sent Fraser Boy the beat, he dropped his hook on it. You know what I mean? Jimmy Cole dropped his verse and I dropped my verse and man, we had that shit out done in probably like a day. You know what I mean? And that song was called What That Mouth Do. Yeah, What That Mouth Do. If you ain't never heard that What That Mouth Do, you should look that up right now. I guarantee you ain't gonna be disappointed because all three of us snapped on that shit for real. Real talk. And ever since that moment, man, me and Fraser Boy was cool, you know. I followed him on the gram. He followed me back on the gram. You know, every now and then I hit him up with a message. You know, show him support when he doing something, you know what I mean? Anytime I see any, anything that he doing or involved with come across my timeline, and he do the same for me as well, you know what I mean? When I'm doing something or promoting something, he usually show love, and I appreciate that, you know what I mean? Because in this business, everybody cutthroat. But Fraser Boy, since he kind of got a taste of what that cutthroat is in the business, he like to damn do shit in a different way, you know? He like to do business you know, based on a relationship, and that's a good thing, always a good thing, you know what I mean, to pay somebody for a feature is cool, and to pay somebody to do something for you is cool, but it's nothing more priceless than getting a good relationship with that person, that y'all can talk to each other, y'all can network, and y'all can do business with each other in different areas, different states, you know what I mean, everybody brings something to the table, and everybody can eat together, and that's how me and my dude Jimmy Cole do it, you know what I mean, that's why his name always comes up in a lot of my facts and not fiction talks because, you know what I mean, he was a real dude to a G. And I try to be a real dude back to him, man. And we just keep on passing that energy along to any people that we meet, any person we come by in this industry, in this game. And that's the best way to do it, man. Because the relationship will always outweigh the money. Always. That's all for the day, man. I just wanted to come chop it up with y'all real quick. Give y'all some facts, not fiction. And just put you on game about my big dog, Fraser Boy, aka Fraser Bizzle. If you don't know, check out the music for Shizzle. And I'm gonna see y'all on the next one. Peace and love.